in last lesson, we have learned that for a standard normal distribution Z, which yields to normal distribution 0, 1, we can find any value, any, dis, any probability that Z is less than or equal to lowercase Z from the SND table, right? And now the question becomes, how do we find the probability for a more general normal distribution? Okay, we have the following conclusions actually. We need first to con convert and generalize normal distribution to a standardized normal distribution. Okay. For a normal random variable x, a particular value of x can be converted to its corresponding z value by using the formula that is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma, where mu and sigma are the mean and the standard deviation of the normal distribution of x, respectively. When x follows a normal distribution, z follows a standard normal distribution. That is to say that you need to remember this conclusion. This is a very important conclusion. If x yields to a normal distribution with two parameters, mu sigma square, let z denote x minus mu and then divide it by sigma, then z here yields to a normal distribution. Understand? In other words, if we have a random variable x, which yields to a normal distribution with two parameters, mu sigma square, and then we can use a new random variable z, which is x minus its mu and divided by its sigma, then the z is that here yields to a standard normal distribution. Understand? Then we can use this conclusion to find any probability for a general normal distribution. Okay, I'll show you how to do this. Okay, suppose, okay, let's see this example. Okay. Suppose x yields to a normal distribution, two parameters are mu is 50, sigma square is 10 square. Find the probability of x is equal to or less than 55. Okay, so here x is not a standard normal distribution, right? It's a general normal distribution. So we cannot use the SND table directly. Okay, cannot use the as in the table directly. First, we need to convert X to a standard normal distribution, right? Okay, so let that here equals to X minus 50 divided by 10, then here, x yield, uh, z yields to a normal distribution, right? So x equals to or less than 55 is okay, when we minus x with 50 and divide it by 10. In order to make this two equivalent, the right hand side term is also minus by 50 and uh, divided by 10, right? These two events are equivalent, so the probability keeps, keeps unchanged. So we can use the equality sign here, okay? And then here is actually your z, right? And uh, here we have 5 divided by 10, which is 0 0.5. And then because that is that here is a standard normal distribution random variable, right? 
and then we can use SND table to look up this value. which is 0 0.6915. This is a probability you are looking for. Understand? Any questions? Okay, no question? Okay, let's see another example okay i'll leave you 10 minutes to solve these two questions by yourself
All right, have you finished? Okay, uh, let's uh, solve this together. I'll show you how to do this. Okay, as we said, X is a general normal distribution. We cannot look up the table directly, right? So first of all, we need to convert X into a standard normal distribution. Okay, so here, for the first question, the probability of x is equal to or more than 25 and uh, equal to or less than 32 is equal to a probability that if we convert x into a standard normal distribution. Both sides of the inequality should have the same transformation, right? So here we have 25 minus 25 divided by four. And on the right hand side, 32 minus 25 also divided by four, which is a standard normal, uh, which is a standard deviation, right? Okay, so next we calculate both sides. Okay, on the left hand side is a zero, and uh, then we have a Z. Then we have seven over four, which is, 1.75, okay? So now the probability of that is equal to or less than 1.5 and uh, equal to or more than zero is the difference between these two probabilities. Right? Then we can we can find these two probabilities by looking up the S and D table. Final result is 0 0.4599. 0 okay. Second question, probability of X is equal to or more than 18 and uh, equal to or less than 34. And we convert it to that equal to or more than 18 minus 25 divided by four. Okay, right hand side we have 34 minus 25 divided by four, which is that, <coughs> need to use a calculator here. What do you say? Can the square? Here's square here. A 2.25. Then this probability is equal to probability of that equal to or less than 2.25 minus the probability of that equal, uh, less than minus one. Minus 1.75, okay. First the probability, let's look at the S and D table.
zero point zero point nine eight seven eight minus Okay, the final result is zero point nine four double seven. Okay, any questions? Okay. No question. Okay, let's see another example. <clears throat> Let x be a normal random variable with its mean equal to 40 and the standard deviation equal to 5. Find the following probabilities for this normal distribution. Okay, I'll leave 10 minutes for you to solve this.
Okay, have you finished? All right, let's uh, try to solve these two problems. Okay, the first one. Should be noted that X is a general normal random variable, right? So we cannot directly use S in the table to find the probability. So we need to convert X to that, which is a normal standard curve. And then at the same time, in order to keep the probability unchanged, the right-hand side of the inequality have to be exerted the same transformation, which is minus mean divided by standard deviation, five. Okay, so we have probability of that is more than three. Again, we cannot look up the table from here, right? We need to convert it to one minus z is equal to or less than three. And then we can check the table for the probability of z is equal to or less than three, which is 0 0.9987. Zero point nine nine eight seven. Okay, so the final result is zero point zero zero one three. Okay, any questions? No? Okay. The second question probability of X less than forty nine is the probability of z less than 49 minus mean, which is 40, divided by standard deviation, which is 5. Okay. 1.80. Then we can find the uh, SND table. 1.80. Which is zero point nine six four one. Okay. Any questions? No. Okay. Let's see the next practice. Let x be a continuous random variable that has a normal distribution with mu is 50 and uh, sigma being 8. Find the probability that x lies in the interval between 30 and 39. Okay, I'll leave you five minutes to finish this.
All right, finished. Okay, again, if you want to find a probability that x lies in this interval, you cannot directly use a SND table, right? First step is to convert general normal distribution to a standard normal distribution. Okay, both sides minus its mu, which is 50, divided by standard deviation, which is eight. And then the probability converted to Z is less is equal to or more than minus 2.5. And uh, less than or equals to minus 1.38. Then this probability is actually the difference of these two probability. Which, which can then be looked up from the SND table. Okay, any questions? Any questions? Okay, the questions we have dealt with, uh, dealt with so far are pure calculation questions. Now that next, let's look at some applications of the real world, which involves normal distribution. Okay, I'll, I'll show you how to do the first example and uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave the rest of the questions to you solve by yourself. Okay, the first one, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, US workers who had employer provided health insurance paid an average premium of $1429 for family coverage during 2011. Suppose that the premiums for family coverage paid this year by all such workers are normally distributed with a mean of 4129 and a standard deviation of 600. Find the probability that such a premium paid this year by a randomly selected such worker is between 3331 and 4453 dollars. Okay, here it asks you to find the probability of x lies in a specific interval, right? Okay, so here, what is the random variable? The random variable is a randomly selected uh, family, premiums paid by this family, right? Okay. So first of all, let's explicitly list the random variable here. Let use uppercase X. Let X denote the premium pay this year. Okay. 
Okay, the so unit is dollars for family coverage by a randomly selected worker. Okay, then we know that x yields to a normal distribution. The mean is four, one, two, nine. And the standard deviation is 600. So here the question asks you to find a probability that x lies is in a specific interval, which is between 3331 and 4453, right? Again, we cannot directly find this probability from the SND table. So first of all, we need to convert this probability to a standard normal distribution probability, which is minus its mean divided by the standard deviation for both sides of the inequality. Right? Okay, let me calculate these values. Okay, first value is minus 1.33. Second value is zero point five four. So this probability is a difference between these two values. And then we can find these two probabilities from the SND table, right? Okay, the first probability is zero point seven zero five four. The second probability is. Zero point zero nine one eight. So the final probability is zero point six one three six. This is the probability you're looking for. Okay, any questions? Okay, if you have no questions, let's look at the next 
problem. Racing car is one of the many toys manufactured by Mac Corporation. The assembly times for this toy follow a normal distribution with a mean of 55 minutes and a standard deviation of 4 minutes. The company closes at 5 p.m. every day. If one worker starts to assemble a racing car at 4 p.m., what is the probability that she will finish his job before the company closes for the day? Okay. I'll leave five minutes for you to finish this question by yourself.
All right, have you finished? Okay, first of all, we need to find the random variable here, right? Okay, so what is the random variable here? It's the time taken for this worker to assemble a racing car, right? Okay, so first let's explicitly list the random variable here. Let x denote the time this worker takes to assemble the racing car. And the unit of the time is minutes. Then the question tells us that x yields to a normal distribution. First parameter is 55. Second parameter is 4. Right? OK, the question asks you to calculate a probability that she will finish this job before the company closes. That means. You need, to cal you need to calculate the probability of x is less than or equal to 60, right? Because if x is equal to or less than 60, then she can finish this job within 60 minutes. That means she can finish this, this job within one hour, which means she can finish this job before the company closes, right? So this is this the probability we are looking at. Again, we cannot find this probability directly from the S and D table. So first, we need to convert x to z, and at the meantime, we need to calculate 60 minus 55 divided by 4, right? which equals to that equals to our minus 1.25. And then we can look up the table. 1.25, the corresponding value of that is 0 0.5. So the probability that she will finish this job before the company closes is 0 0.8944. Okay, any questions? Any questions? No? Okay, let's see the next one. I'm not going to read it for you. I'll leave five minutes for you to finish this question, all right? And then we'll discuss it together.
All right, have we finished? Okay, the first step is to understand the meaning of the random variable. So what's the, what's the random variable here? The lifespan of such a calculator, right? Okay, so first of all, let's let x denote the lifespan of such a calculator. And the unit is months. Then the question tells us that x yields to a normal distribution with a mean of 54 months, standard deviation of eight months, right? Then it asks you to find a percentage of calculators made by this company are expected to be replaced. That means for any given calculator, the probability of such a calculator made is expected to be replaced, right? So basically it asks you to find a probability of left span is less than 36 months, right? Because when the lifespan is less than 36 months, you have to replace this calculator to your custom, right? Okay, so basically you have to calculate this probability, which is, again, we cannot look up this value from the table directly. So first, you need to convert x to z. And at the same time, the right-hand side of the inequality has to yield the same transformation, which is minus by mean divided by standard deviation, which is z is less than 2.25. Okay, then we can find this probability from the standard normal curve, a standard normal distribution table. which is 0 0.0122, okay? Any questions? Okay, if you, if you have no questions, let's look at the next one. It is known that the life of a calculator manufactured by a calculator's corporation has a normal distribution with a mean of 54 months and a standard deviation of eight months. What should be the warranty period be to replace a malfunctioning calculator if the company does not want to replace more than 1% of the calculators sold? Okay, I'll leave you five minutes to solve this question. Then we'll discuss it together.
Okay, let's uh, have a look at how we can solve such a question. Okay, first of all, as usual, we have to list the random variable here. Let, again, let x denote the left of a calculator. Okay, x has a unit of months. Then it tells us that x follows a normal distribution. First parameter is 54. Second parameter is eight square. Okay, because it asks us to find a warranty period, right? So warranty period is unknown. Then so we need a letter to denote the warranty period. Okay, let x zero denote the warranty period. Okay, the unit again is months. So actually we want the probability of any given calculator's lifespan is equal to or less than x zero, is equal to or less than 1%, right? Because we do not want to replace more than 1% of all the calculators. So that means we want this inequality, which is z equals to or less than x zero minus 54 divided by eight is equal to or less than 0 0.01. Okay, to achieve this, we need to find that for which value the probability of that equal to or less than this value is 0 0.01, right? That means we need to find the value from the SND table. Okay, look up the SND table and we can find that this value, which is x0 minus 54 divided by eight, should be equal to or less than minus 2.33. Okay, in order to achieve these, x0 should be equal to or less than 35.36 months. Right? That means we can use a warrant period of 35.36 months or less for the calculators in order to not replace more than 1% of all the calculators sold. Okay, any questions? No? Okay, let's see the last question.
Okay, have you finished? Again, first we need to use x to represent the random variable here. So let x denote the combined SAT score of uh, examinee. Then it tells us that x yields to a normal distribution with a mean of 1012 and a standard deviation of 213. And it also shows us that Jennifer's score, which is unknown, then we need to let x0 denote Jennifer's SAT score. Uh, it tells actually it tells us that for any other examinee's SAT score, X higher than X zero is ten percent, right? The probability of any given examinee's score is larger than Jennifer's score is 10%. Okay, that means we have that more than x, my, x0 minus 1012 divided by 213 is 0 0.1, right? If you want to use S and D table, we need to convert this to that is less than this value. Which is 0 0.1, which means the probability of that is equal to or less than 0, x0 minus 1012 divided by Two one three is zero point nine, right? And then we need to look at the S and E table to find which value corresponding to the probability of nine at uh, zero point nine. And then we can find this value is approximately. One point two eight. Then we can calculate x zero is approximately one point two eight times two one three plus one zero one two, which is approximately One, one, two, eight, four point sixty four. Okay. Any questions? Okay, if you know have if you have no questions, this is uh, what we have learned in today's lesson.